right, all right. How's everyone doing? Who likes selling flatware? Raise your hands. So I absolutely love selling flatware. I'm excited to talk to you guys about it. Uh, real quick, I just want to admire you guys for being here again. I know um, everyone else has been saying it, but uh, taking the time out of your schedule from your loved ones, your family, um, you know, obviously you can be working and making money as well, but investing in the time to sharpen your ax and be here for the few days to really master your craft and focus on improving your sales for your business, um, it's something that you should be proud of, something that you should be excited about, because what you learn here and what you implement for the rest of the year is going to transform who you are and how your business develops future, um, you know, moving forward. So one thing I do want to hit home, though, is this. A lot of people I've been talking to just uh, last night, they're already overwhelmed with, like, information and all this exciting stuff that they're learning from all the awesome speakers that we got going on. And there's more to learn, too. And I'm going to drop some nuggets that you'll be really excited about. And this handout that you have is going to be gold for you. So hold on to that. Take a picture of it just in case you lose it. Um, but I want you guys to really focus on one to two things that you can take away from this conference that if you were to be a master at and practice, that it would transform your sales this year. So whether it's being better at selling sets being better at selling flatware, cookware, package deals, or implementing those hundred crazy closes that Mike Dow had talked about. Uh, whatever it is, pick one or two things that you can really master. And I promise if you just focus on that, instead of trying to just throw everything that you're learning into your approach, you don't want to be decent at 10 things. You want to be a master at one to two things. And I promise you, you guys will get way better results that way. And obviously, when you become a master at those one or two things, then you start focusing on the other things that you're not as good at, right? So that's my big tip I want to do before I start talking about flatware. So let's dive in, though. So selling flatwares is probably one of the best values, in my opinion, for customers. And I truly believe that, which is why I think I sell as much flatware as I do. And it's one of the most CPO rewarding orders. So not having flatware in your approach can cost you thousands and thousands of you know, CPO per year. Plus, it's a big income missed opportunity. So my main goal today is really just to inspire you guys to um, implement flatware into every single approach with your customers, whether it's in-home on your service calls, but especially at your events. That's like the best, easiest time, I think, to catch people with their emotions, and they can see the flatware right there. So it gets them really excited to pull the trigger. And imagine, guys, if you can double your average order by selling more flatware chests, and then even just become a leader in flatware sales for you know, your team, uh, your division, the region, and then the company. So like Mike Dowett, he just took the number one spot, number one flatware chest salesman in the history of the company. That's pretty awesome. So who's going to catch them? So there's three keys to selling flatware. How many keys do we got? Three. Wrong, whoever said 12. <laughs> okay, so number one, guys, um, I think this is actually something that's looked over a lot, but you need to have a really attractive, American-made flatware chest on display with the six-piece serving set. So how many of you guys still use the, the Mexico flatware pieces? I think it's time to invest. Swap those out for the American-made ones. So I'm actually um, guilty of this. For the last three or four years, I still kept my uh, Made in Mexico ones. And so I don't know if you've ever had that problem where a customer like picked it up and said, you said it's American-made? Like, why does it say Mexico on the back of it? And I'm just like, oh, and I have to explain the story. But it just like throws off the whole vibe. And so don't make that mistake. So I'm sure most of you have already transferred that over, but uh, I just wanted to make a point of that. But attractive. How many of you guys have like beat up chests or boxes because it just gets moved, you know, during all the shows that you're working? And like you open the chest and like it's like flopping to the side. 
or like the hinges are broken, or like the paint's chipping off on the box. That's what you don't want. You want to have like a nice, crisp box that's very attractive. Also have your flatware polished at all times. Um, I just worked uh, an event with Connor Kelly. Some of you might know him. He's not here today. But uh, the first thing he said when he was looking at my setup was like, holy, like, holy crap, like your flatware looks pristine. I was like, well, why do you think I sell so much? Like, you have to make it look attractive. It has to be an attention grabber, and people have to, like, walk up and be like, this is nice. And you'll get that if you have a proper display. And if you like or watch Mike Dawood's videos, um, he does a really good job, like, raising the flatware. And then he has, like, those two white plates where he puts the, the serving sets on them. Like, that's an attractive display, right? And then how many times have you been selling a set to somebody, Mr. or Mrs. Jones, but the spouse walks over to the flatware and they're just all goo-goo eyes and they're like, honey, have you seen this stuff? That's what happens when you have an attractive display. So good looking box, not damaged. Um, I like to have the full 12 piece setup. I know some people are doing the thing now where they just have like one set and then like one table knife in there because I don't even know what the purpose is. But here's my idea is if you're trying to sell 12 sets in a box, guess what? You should probably have 12 sets in the box. And what it does is it creates that, that feel for the customer of this is what it's going to look like when I open it for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner or this is what it's going to look like when it's at my house. So you want to create that same experience if they're going to buy it. Number two is, this is, a, this is the big one. This is probably the, the one reason why I sell a lot of flatware is I promote the flatware to every single customer I work with. And here's my challenge for all of you is, like, what's your standard when it comes to working with past customers and new customers? And, like, do you have a standard in place of what you show them in what order? So like some of you might be really excited about selling upgrades or five piece companion sets. But I challenge you to make flatware a priority to be in your pitch to show to every single customer because you never want to prejudge if a customer is going to like it or be in the market for it. And never let your fear of what the cost of the flatware is to stop you from showing it to somebody. I have a 60 second approach. So a lot of you guys probably haven't like fine tuned what your approach is for flatware. But I really just, there's a, if you look on the, the handout, um, it's like towards the, the end of it, but it's the key points that build interest. I literally just go through those key points in 60 seconds, okay? And the whole point of that is you're just hitting the points that resonate with the customer that make them want to buy it. So cut out all the fluff. You know what I mean? Really just fine tune and narrow your pitch. And I always just tell a customer, like, can I share my 60 second summary or approach with you about why our flatware is so awesome? So it's a really easy way to kind of get them interested. And that's how you can show it to everybody you work with pretty quickly. And then from there, you gauge their interest level to where you can dive in further, okay? So we can get in that to a little bit more details later. But just remember that the more you show, the more you'll sell. So if you're showing it to 15 to 20 customers per day in an event, your odds of selling more flatware is going to be much higher than someone that only shows it to the customers that bring up the flatware. Right? Imagine if you waited for every customer to ask about the flatware. You're not going to sell that much. Well, you, you might if you had like a glowing light on it with like, you know, music playing from behind it. And it's like raised up higher than everything else. Like, I mean, there's ways you can probably get more attraction to it. But if you just promote it to everybody, you're going to put yourself in a better position. And then the best part is, guys, is because you promote it to everybody, it helps you sell more package deals. 
And by selling more package deals, it helps you sell Cutco kitchens, right? So if you can't get good at selling flatware, how the heck are you ever going to sell package deals or Cutco kitchens? So just know it's just part of that. Like it's something to get really good at. And the last key tip is handing samples to clients or customers, but making sure you handle objections ahead of time. So I forgot who I learned this from, but you know, obviously it was probably like an RDC or a net meeting a couple years ago. But this money line helped me sell so much more flatware and avoid the objection of, oh, it's very thin and light. So who gets that? Oh, it's pretty thin and light, like bulky, heavy stuff. So here's the key. You hand them a fork or a spoon, and as you're handing it to them, you say, one of my customer's favorite things about our flatware is it's a thinner and lighter design. And so what are they thinking as they're about to grab it? It's going to be a thinner and lighter design. And it literally just takes away the whole objection of, oh, it's kind of thin and light. They, they literally go, you're right. I do like that. And then it's like, oh, so glad I said that. Like, but now it's something that I'm aware of, right? That's, it's intentional now in my approach. So obviously I do my 60-second approach, hand them a fork. What my customers love, Mrs. Jones, it's a thinner and lighter design. And then normally after, just so she doesn't sit on the thinner and lighter design, I pull the table knife out and I say, feel this one. Because it's like a lot heavier and it's a little bit like thicker. And then you pull that leather out and you say, remember the um, leather demonstration we did with like the Cutco steak knife? Here, take the stainless one and then cuts right through it. And she's like, oh, they're just as sharp. And you're like, exactly. So there's a lot of things you can do by just handing samples to them and then handling objections ahead of time, which is going to help your clothes be so much smoother and easier. Okay? But just let them hold it. Let them feel it. And then... Um, Use that line that my customers love that it's a thinner and lighter design. That'll help you a lot. Okay, so diving into proper ways to display the flatware. So I like to have a flatware chest in the front. So in the front, facing the main traffic. Again, have it raised if you can. Have the serving set out. But you want it to be like where people are walking by and like literally it's just catching their eye. And if it's polished and it looks nice it's just an attention grabber like there's people that don't even know about cutco that don't even need knives that will literally just stop and be like how much how much is this flatware because that's how nice it is and then obviously you can pull them in and work with them and uh, qualify them so don't put it in the back i've seen some people's display where like it's way in the back where no one can even touch it um, you're not going to sell flatware doing that so put it in the front Raise it if you can. Um, let it be more accessible for clients to pick it up, hold it, and feel it. Um, how many of you guys have actually been working with a customer at like a solo show? And then you kind of like look over and somebody's like playing with your flatware. And you're like, oh, hey, I'll be right with you in just a moment. And then like you wrap up your sale and you walk over. And then like a customer is like interested in buying flatware because it was just out. It was accessible. And now they're interested, and they're at your booth for 10 minutes waiting for you to be done so they can see how much this you know, flatware is going to cost them. And a lot of times it's a Cutco owner, right? And they're like, oh, my God, I didn't even know you guys made flatware. Like, this is beautiful. And then you're like, yeah, it's the box of beauty. Can I show you why it's our number one deal at the show? And then, boom, you dive in, okay? So that's why it's important to have it accessible. And then, again, it brings up interest, even if you're showing and selling knife sets. But if they can see it, right, like if you're pitching a homemaker, but your flatware's right here, I mean, they're going to look at it. And that's what's beautiful about it is, like, you're, you're selling knives, and then a lot of times, like, mid-pitch, like, hey, Matt, um, is that your guys' stuff too? And then the money line is like, oh, yeah, we actually have package deals that include that, you know, get the perfect storm of savings. But we'll focus on the knives, and I'll show you that after. Sound good? And then Boom leads into package deals after you close the knife set, right? So many times I've had that happen at a show, and once I close the knife set, customer asks me, so when are you going to tell me about this flatware? And that's when you know like you've done a good job. 
having it out on display, and then uh, planting seeds for them. So which is what we're getting into right now, how to promote to your clients. So the first is uh, new customers, OK? Um, the most important thing for new customers, because obviously you're focused on knives, is you just want to plant seeds early on in your demo that we offer much more than just knives. A lot of times, now that we have this awesome backdrop um, from DPZ Marketing, you can just like point behind you and be like, yeah, we actually have this thing called the Cutco Kitchen. That's what all my customers work towards. We actually have a package deal to knock it all out today if you really wanted to. But of course, most people start with the knives. But just so you know, Ms. Jones, we do have flatware, and we do have pots and pans, and it's all under the same warranty and American-made. So imagine replacing all your kitchen tools with American-made quality. It's something you're going to use every day, and you'll have peace of mind that it's going to be guaranteed and replaced forever. Like something like planting a seed as simple as that can lead to so much more, whether it's at that event and they buy a package deal or just plants the seed. Now they know not to go look at kitchen craft down the aisle, right? Or not to go to Bed Bath & Beyond and buy a you know, $300 flatware chest that they're gonna replace every four or five years. So planting seeds is super important. And here's some of the key lines that I think is on your handout, but I'll go over them anyways. So I say, yeah, we also make really good quality flatware. Uh, it's American made, has the same forever guarantee, and it's used every day, which makes it a great investment. Something simple you can say, I like that. And I also say stuff like, we also have a great package deal, or we also have great package deals that include our flatware. So if you're looking for the best savings, I can show you what that looks like. By the way, this is my favorite. Put a star next to this one. What's your flatware situation like at home? Just a nice opening question to let them talk about what their flatware situation is like. Uh, I do this for cookware too, so cookware plug. Um, and by, by asking that question, guys, it creates that visual pain of like, oh, We've had the same stuff for 20 years that we got for our wedding. It's mixed match. We've actually, we're missing like all the forks. And they start just creating like the, the picture of the painful situation they have at home. And then you lead into the next question, which you probably know what it is. Oh, Miss Jones, that sounds terrible. Now, have you ever thought about replacing your flatware at home? You know what, Matt? Now that I see that you have flatware, that's something I'd be interested in talking about. Or if someone's like, you know what, it's, it's, it's pretty decent. You know, it's pretty good. It's not bad. That's where I'm like, oh, OK. Well, in the next few years, do you ever see yourself complementing your flatware set or replacing that flatware set? So then you can just kind of paint the picture of, like, do you ever see yourself adding to that current flatware set or replacing it? Because sometimes customers are like, not thinking today, right? Like, not this moment, I want to get new flatware. But yeah, for sure in the next three or four years, I would definitely be in the market. And so you being a great Cutco salesperson should be able to build enough value and why it makes more sense to invest today, get the extra savings. You know how it works, OK? And then, of course, have you ever seen our flatware? So peaking interest of like, do you even know about it? Have you seen it? Um, and then I just like to just say, hey, come check this out just for fun. And I literally walk them over and I do my approach, OK? So that's a good way to plant seeds for new customers. Now with Cutco owners, a lot of times they do know about it or they don't. So you never prejudge. You just kind of like bring it up as often as possible. And uh, I think I got this one from Mike Dowd. Have you ever seen the box of beauty, Mrs. Jones? I'm like, what's that? I'm like, you're looking at it. And it's just like a beautiful box of beauty, right? And then my favorite one is, Mrs. Jones, are you open to seeing the number one deal we have at the show right now? So think about when you say that to a customer. Why would a customer not want to see 
the number one deal at the show right now. And you can even go further, like, hey, Mrs. Jones, do you want to see the number one deal my Cutco customers are coming to me just to check out at the show? And they're like, well, no, what is that? And then you show them the flatware chest, okay? And then because of what you are getting, so this is like, say they're buying an upgrade, say they're buying high-piece companion set, whatever they are getting, um, I always use this line of Mrs. Jones, because of what you are getting, you qualify for a secret special on our flatware chest. Just for fun, can I show you what that looks like? And then the last thing that I like to plant the seed about for Cutco owners is Mrs. Jones. It's the next big thing all my clients invest in after they complete their knife set. Then you're going to be one step closer to owning the Cutco kitchen. So just building excitement and interest in like the steps they're taking to owning the Cutco kitchen. And then again, the key points, guys, that build interest, um, the reason why I had this in here is because I hear a lot of newer reps, even veteran reps, just kind of like over talk about the flatware. And they never really like let the customer sell with the important information, the stuff that sticks, the stuff that actually makes them want to invest in flatware. So I would just memorize these points, okay, study it and then make that part of your 60 second approach. So like, I'll kind of walk through what it might look like. Best part about our flatware is this, American made. It's got the same forever guarantee as the knives. And it even counts with garbage disposal accidents. You know when the kids just accidentally throw them in there, right? Don't you hate that? Um, bending and breaking, it's 1810 stainless, which is the best quality for everyday use. It keeps a good polish, and it's almost like the new silver, because most people prefer to invest in 1810 stainless now. It's less maintenance, and it's good quality. It's a timeless design that won't be changed, so it's peace of mind for you that you can add more in the future, and it'll still be matching and still look great whether you use it for holidays, special occasions, or everyday use. So no more mixed match flatware. Um, it's a thinner and lighter design, so it's not too bulky, not too heavy, and it stacks real nicely in the drawer. The best part is it's used daily, or it's great for entertaining during special occasions like the holidays. And always remember, Mrs. Jones, because of the forever guarantee, this is an heirloom investment that your kids can inherit one day so it's going to stay in the family forever. So use those points. And clean up your approach to where, like, you just stick to that. And then you let the customer just kind of resonate with it. And don't be quick to show pricing. Let them, like absorb all that information, and most of the time, the customer is going to ask you, all right, Matt, this looks expensive. How much does this cost? You know what I mean? Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about upserving to get flat added to knife sets or whatever they're purchasing. My favorite is when they're buying, like, three or four knives, so they're already spending a couple hundred dollars. And then it's like your leverage to really do like the perfect storm of savings. But of course, uh, I think what I am best at um, at events right now is uh, when anyone's buying a set, whether it's a homemaker, signature, or ultimate, um, I literally average like one to two, sometimes three flatware packages per event I do. I just had two this past weekend that I, I did on a three day, three day event. So build value in the flatware, make them see it as an investment, something that they're gonna use daily. Biggest thing is to paint the picture for them of why it's gonna be nice to have, and then create the curiosity for the customer to want to look at the special. So that's the best part is like you just, you wanna get them so excited about the box of beauty that they just ask you, all right, show me the flatware, What's the perfect storm of savings? 
what's this package deal you're talking about? Like, you want them to get curious about the stuff you're talking about. And then once you do that, just make them an offer that just makes sense to do it today. So here's all the money lines. I'll walk through them real quick with you, and then we'll finish off with a, a bonus, okay? So Mrs. Jones, because of the set you are getting, you actually qualify for one of our best package deals, which gives you the perfect storm of savings. Do you mind if I show you what that includes? Or you can say this. Just so you know, our flatware special is hands down the biggest discount we are offering at the show. So just for fun, Mrs. Jones, can I show you what that is? And then some key questions, some qualifying questions would be, do you see yourself investing in new flatware in the near future? So by saying near future, that can mean one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, maybe even 10 years, right? But if you don't say near future and you say, do you see yourself investing in new flatware? That customer's probably thinking like today. And so a lot of times, we, oh, no, not really. But when we say in the near future, like, Possibly, yeah, possibly in the near future. And then here's a couple of the good ones is, um, if I gave you a turbocharged deal on the flatware today, would you consider it? Or would you be open to seeing what that looks like? So again, what are you doing? You're creating curiosity to see what the special is going to be. That's half the battle is like getting the chance to even do a special for the customer, and let them say yes or no to you. And then, Mrs. Jones, knowing you are in the market for flatware, so for someone that did express replacing flatware or like getting something down the road, this is a money line I use. So knowing you are in the market for flatware, if I gave you a turbocharged special with what you're already buying today, would you be open to getting it today? And then for the stubborn people that are like, they kind of know they're easy to sell, they're already buying like an ultimate set, and they just kind of know like it's going to cost a lot more to get the flatware, and they're just like not really open to like seeing the special, I'm just like, Mrs. Jones, do you just mind if I tempt you with my best offer and show you what that looks like? Just for fun. That's like literally what I say to them. And they're like, fine, show me. And then a lot of times those are the people that always buy. <laughs> so just have fun with them, Okay. Now, here's my bonus for you guys. Raise your hand if you've ever sold two, three, or more flatware chests on one order. That's actually a pretty good amount. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to tell you guys first the easiest way to sell flatware at $13.99, which is what we sell it for. And then I'm going to show you guys how to sell multiple flatware chests on one order. Okay. So here's the key. Most people are doing this because I know the vast action specials reflect this now. But selling the flatware with the six-piece serving set as a package deal, that's what you're promoting off the bat. 1667, okay? So who's all doing that already? Okay, for those of you who aren't, you're literally just selling the flatware as if it already includes the six-piece serving set. So it's just the six-piece serving set price with the $13.99, if that makes sense. And that's what you're promoting, right? So Mrs. Jones, here's our special at the show. $16.67, you get 12 sets of 1810 stainless, American-made, guaranteed forever flatware. Comes in this beautiful box, but it also includes the six-piece serving set. And then you stick on the $16.67 as long as possible. Don't shoot yourself in the foot, and before they give you any objection, drop down to $13.99. Don't do that. So the best part is, like, you stick on that price, and you try to throw in some free stuff, right? Use Fonz Jenkins as a, you know, ninja skills for selling gadgets, and just start including the gadgets for free to get them excited about getting the flatware at $16.67. But here's the key is, when they say no, and you handle the objections properly, and most of the time, it's just the price, right? Hey, Matt, like, I would love to add this to my set today, but I'm already spending two grand on the signature, so flatware is going to have to wait till next year. And then I dropped the whole line of, well, Mrs. Jones, 
if you did get it today and I did like a turbocharged, crazy, ridiculous deal, knowing you're already going to buy it next year from me, wouldn't you agree it makes more sense to get it today and get the extra savings? So that being said, do you just mind if I show you my last like turbocharged, do it now, don't walk away special, just for fun? And then I just do the whole drop down from 1667 to 1399 for adding the flatware to their set. And then all of a sudden they see the price positioning of like, wow, he literally just took like $300 off the flatware to help me get the best deal today. And then boom, add that on, double your order or almost double your order. And even if you're only focusing on flatware, like that's the only thing the customer is looking at. It's a beautiful drop down, right? From 1667, you've asked multiple times because you've handled the objections. You maybe threw like one knife in for free. They still said no, but they're really close. On a scale of one to 10, where you're at, you're an eight. You know, if I can get you to a nine, would you consider it today? Perfect, here's the one last thing I'll do. Family and friend discount, 1399. And they're like, wow, you're gonna drop it 280 bucks today? I'll take it, okay? so that's the. That's the big key to selling flatware at $13.99 is start with the $16.67. Okay, last thing is uh, how to get multiple flatware chests on one order. Um, I think a couple people that were field training with me at the San Diego Fair watched me do this twice. Um, I think D DP was one of them. I don't know if he's in here, but it's fun. Okay, the key is, is never settle. Remember when you get that credit card, right? That's game on. And until the customer's like, Matt, stop showing me stuff. We're done. We're tapped out. You keep asking. So here's, what, here's, how, here's how it works. Say you sell your first flatware chest, okay? She's excited. You're excited. Here's the money question you can ask the customer. Now, Mrs. Jones, you have the credit card, by the way. Mrs. Jones, have you ever entertained more than 12 people for dinner? Or my other question is, Mrs. Jones, has there ever been a time where you needed more than 12 place settings? And so you'll get those customers from time to time that they're like, yes, I have 18 people for Christmas every year. So what does that tell you? She needs two sets, right? The best ones are like, I need at least 36 sets, honey. And you're just like, oh, we got a package for that. So just so you know, because you are getting the flatware special, if you add another one, you get an even bigger discount on the next one. It's worth checking out if you can see yourself using more than 12 sets from time to time. And then I love just saying this, too. We, ask, we actually have secret specials for two sets, three sets, and even more sets. So sometimes you get a you know, customer that's interested. And then the other thing that I tie in getting multiple sets to is being able to pass those sets down to their kids. So if you know they have like three or four kids, they're all around the age where they're getting married, buying their houses, graduating from college, um, it's actually a really good time where you can actually implement that and use that strategy to get more sets. So anyways, guys, hold on to those sheets. Make sure you study those, uh, those questions because that's also questions you can apply to selling other things. But thank you for your time. I hope you guys sell a ton of flatware this year. Kill it behind the booth. Good luck, guys.